small grounding exercise just to sort of bring everybody into the present moment. So if it feels good to you right now, and if you're in a place where you can do so, gently close your eyes. And just see if for a moment you can notice that you're breathing. Notice your inhale. Notice your exhale. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. I am here. Breathing out. I release. Breathing in. I smell the air. Breathing out. I am light. Breathing in. I feel this moment. Breathing out, I know it is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, I smile. Breathing out, I send love. And just tune into your breath for a few more moments. And when it feels good to you, you can open your eyes and slowly and gradually come back into our little room. So nice. Thank you, Anastasia. That was lovely. Yeah. You might have to start every camper chat with that, <laughs> except I'm gonna have the guests do it so that I can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it's interesting, but even like saying the words, especially if I close my eyes, I can, um, it's like I'm not even here. It's really nice. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so just as a short, we're going to do some introductions. Um, the woman's face, Amanda, if you saw at the very beginning, if you guys are new to our chats, um, she is the like logistics scheduling uh, warm customer, awesome manager at Redbud Suds. So she's gonna, she popped in at the beginning. She's gonna pop back in at the end as we do the giveaway. Um, so that's Amanda. That's why she was here and uh, will be joining us at the end. Um, and a quick little intro of Anast how I how I came to invite Anastasia and Alina to this chat. Um, Anastasia, I don't know if I've told you this, but I actually found you through a Google image search. <laughs> about I did not know that. It was almost a year ago. And I was doing one of those, like, it's the beginning of the year, thinking through, like, I was actually making one of those, you know, vision boards. And I was like, I need to find an image for being on the top of a mountain, making music, um, at like sunrise or sunset and somewhere I had seen an image of this person playing violin and someone playing piano and it looked magical and I was like I need that in my life and so I started searching and it took me a while and then I found you and I was like oh my gosh it's also the founder of the Kula Club what? this is crazy so then I reached out to you and it happened that we were both going to OR um, the outdoor retailer trade show in Colorado, which is like the last thing I ever did before everything shut down for the <laughs> pandemic. Um, so we got to meet, which was fantastic. Um, had a delightful conversation there and um, it's been fun to kind of be following each other ever since. Um, and Alina, I was introduced to you through the Kula um, 
brand, I uh, reached out to Anastasia and I said, hey, I love what you do with artists and collaborations and, um, and how you're you know, doing some good work in the world that way. Do you have any suggestions of who we should also work with? And you've worked with um, Anastasia and Kula Cloth with your own custom Kula. So, um, and since then, I just have to put a little plug in for <laughs> Elena's amazing artwork. She is helping my husband and I commemorate our 10th wedding anniversary by making a, a beautiful portal um, if you guys have not yet checked out through Design's website, um, don't do it now because we want you here for chat. But after this, go check out her incredible work. Um, I am just like giddy with anticipation to see how this turns out. So, um, so now that I've said how you've been introduced to Redbud Suds, um, Anastasia, maybe we can start with you. If you guys can just share in like three sentences or so um, what your business is and what you hope to um, do through your creativity? Yeah, so my business is called Kula Cloth. We make an antimicrobial pee cloth uh, for anybody who squats when they pee. It is a leave no trace, reusable toilet paper option that looks really awesome. It is for pee only, that's my disclaimer. Um, I want Kula to be a vehicle for good in the world and to me, that is honestly the most important thing. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I feel, I, yeah, that's, I mean, I feel like I've been gifted this beautiful brand and um, the point of it becomes more connection and doing things that really matter. And what that comes down to is other human beings and the planet. And so using the business to make an impact in those ways is what I hope that we can do. Well, and along the way, you're like absolutely hysterical. Your Instagram account is so entertaining always. I laugh a lot. <laughs> um, and how about you, Alina? Tell us about your business. Yeah, um, so my business is through designs. I'm an artist slash illustrator. My business is very new. I only started seven months ago at the start of the pandemic. Before this, I was into through hiking. I hiked the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Israel National Trail. And for me, this has just been an amazing way to align my passions, both for this through hiker community, um, as well as my passion for art. And my hope is to help people commemorate their journey and also just amplify diversity in the outdoors through my art. Um, but yeah, in general, just have people connect with this journey through a visual lens. And make sense of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the process of reflection that you go through to like even have you do that work. Like I was noticing as I was picking what pictures and what <laughs> images. Like it really does change you in a way. Like make a story or make sense of your your life. It's kind of powerful. yeah, really powerful. I mean, I spend like an hour a day brainstorming in the tub, so this is very normal for me. Yes. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. I have become a recent convert of the bathtub as a just way and place to relax. I <laughs> was traditionally like too, I didn't move too fast to take baths, but I'm learning that, you know, sometimes you just got to slow down a little bit. So yeah. <laughs> and you can work in the tub. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. Yeah. You guys should see my setup in here. I've got like a table. <laughs> it's like pretty awesome. Um, so to get you to know you guys and just sort of like be a little bit fun and playful. Um, I'm gonna do the lightning round. Um, note, this used to be my travel log, but now it's my camp chat notebook because I don't <laughs> travel much anymore. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna shoot a quick question and then um, maybe Alina will start with you and then bounce to Anastasia, just like pop the answer real quick. So number one, favorite place to adventure? Probably the Olympic Peninsula as of this summer. Mm. I would have to say Canyonlands. Uh, anywhere in Utah. Cool. Yeah, beautiful. Um, your favorite adventure food, something you will never be found without. Mm. Annie's mac and cheese. I'm going to have to go with outdoor pantry biscuits and gravy. <laughs> mm, yum. That sounds delicious. Um, a quirky or a little known fact about yourself? I guess my bathtub fact would be I wrote my college admission essay about writing my college admission essay from the tub. 
Awesome. <laughs> um, I don't think you know I, how deep the sass goes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think mine would be that I ride a unicycle, which some people know, but I also have a five foot tall unicycle. And when I was 11, I was in Sports Illustrated for kids posing on my five foot tall giraffe unicycle. <laughs> nice. That sounds terrifying and totally awesome. <laughs> yeah, I used to I used to ride around on it and like people would stare and make weird faces. And I remember at that point in my life, I was like, oh, they're looking at me because they think I'm so cool. <laughs> How is like, it not resurfaced on the cool Instagram, that photo? Oh, you know, I need to look into it. I'm wearing uh, overall shorts and a no fear hat as well. Oh my God. <laughs> so fitting. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay, so a little more studious here. Your favorite book and or podcast? Um, am I still going first? Um, my favorite author is probably Gabrielle Garcia Marquez. And then of his books, probably a hundred years of solitude. So good. It's like going I, into a portal. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, I have to say, okay, it was favorite book and podcast. Mm -hmm. um, podcast, I love how I built this, which probably wouldn't surprise anybody. <laughs> um, I also like Reply All. And I just read a book this isn't my favorite book because every book that I'm reading is my favorite book, but I just read a book called Virgil Wander by Leif Ender and it was absolutely fantastic. Hmm, cool. I'll have to write that down. That sounds interesting. Um, okay, so we're going to go deep here. Biggest fear and biggest wish. I'll let Anastasia go first for this one. All right. <laughs> um, Okay. Wow. I feel like I could get like super philosophical. Biggest fear. I don't know if I have any anymore. I used to. Can I say that? Like I used to be afraid of disappointing people. And then I realized that like most fears are just made up in my head and they aren't real. And I like disassociated from all of them. Um, and so I try not to think about them too much. Maybe um, cougars, if I had to pick something <laughs> like cougars. I do, I do hike with bear spray. Mm -hmm. um, and biggest wish, hmm. I guess my biggest wish would be for others and to sort of um, remember how special they are. I think a lot of people live their lives like not totally recognizing like what a limitless amazing being they are and um i hope that like through what i do i can like help people remember that that's something that i think i lived maybe this goes back to the fear i think my original fear would have been like this that I wouldn't be successful. And it was sort of when I like got rid of those fears and recognized this like limitless potential that lived within me, um, that I was able to sort of move past that. And I hope other people can feel that too. That's my greatest wish. Cool, thanks for sharing. Yeah, those are deep wishes. <laughs> yeah. This is why I like, made you go first, Anastasia, because I knew it was gonna get deep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think my biggest fear, I think it used to be mortality, just in general. Um, but honestly, I think since I've been doing my art, I have way less existential crises. So that's good. Um, and now I, I definitely am scared of the dark for sure when I'm hiking. And then my biggest wish, I don't know, I guess I hope to have more hope about the state of the environment. And in terms of having offspring one day, not feeling like we're constantly uh, at the end of the world would be nice. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Doesn't change when you have offspring or if you have offspring. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 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 
Okay, I feel like I could say so much, but the whole point of this is to let you guys talk. So I'm going to zip my lips and um, let the real talk continue. Um, I have so many questions. So um, Anastasia, I almost called you Kula. Anastasia, um, I, fine. I am so, I, I would love to hear, and I think the people listening in um, would love to hear this too. So um, one of the things that I love so much about how you run the Kula Cloth um, is that you, you're so responsive to what is happening in the moment. Um, and, you know, anyone who's followed Red Bud Suds, you know, like part of our existence is philanthropy, is to be able to raise money for these causes that we care about and to be able to uplift and support um, different environmental efforts and what whatnot. Um, and uh, during the, the chaos that was early June, um, I was following along the Kula Cloth, Kula Land, um, and you very quickly pulled together this fundraiser that raised literally thousands of dollars for Black Lives Matter, for um, Camp Founder Girls. I forget who all was a part of that um, mm -hmm. collaboration. Can you, and you did this with a pea cloth. Like that is also what just cracks me up so much. Um, can you tell us about that process? Like what is, go, like yeah. how, did, how did that come about? How do you approach well, that? And I'm glad you asked because that project was actually something that we had been working on, like un literally unbeknownst to everybody for, oh my gosh, I mean, I think it had been close to a year we had been talking about it. Um, Latasha Dunstan, Jitterbug Art was the artist who did the Solidarity Kula. We had already done two designs with Latasha. I had reached out to Latasha um, I would say like earlier in her art journey, she had just left her job. Um, as she had been working, I believe as a bartender and like had gone full-time artist. And it was right around that time that I had reached out to her about doing Kula designs. And so she had already done two designs for us. And then um, we started pitching, like talking about this idea uh, with no real like, time frame of when it was going to happen and Teresa Baker from the CEO diversity project or diversity yeah the CEO diversity pledge was also involved in it and there was actually a big brand who was initially involved in it and then with big brands there's a lot of red tape that you have to go through in order to get things produced and that's one of the fun things about being a small brand is like exactly like you said i can just make a decision and make something happen instantly i don't have to like go back to hr because there's there's no hr it's like yeah. oh wait let me put on my hr hat for a second is this exactly okay? sure. let all right go, let me go <laughs> make a call. So we have been working on this, this design with Latasha. And when things began to, I guess I could say intensify in May and June, we, it was like this overwhelming knowing that like, this was the time, this is why it didn't work out with the other big brand. You know what I mean? Like, it's so easy to look at that thing as like a missed opportunity and now I'm like oh my gosh thank goodness it didn't happen that way because yeah. then we wouldn't have been sort of positioned to actually make a difference and respond mm -hmm. um and so it, it sort of appeared that oh look Kula just like popped out of nowhere with this design but it had actually been a year in the making and had had sort of gone through some turmoil of like what are we going to do with this like how do we launch it and then um i think the universe sort of works in mysterious ways and we had this design and we reached out to latasha and Teresa, and it was like it wasn't that we reached out to them it was like this convergence of the mind where all of us simultaneously reached out to each other at the same time and we were like we need to do this, this like so immediately funny. Yeah, like mm -hmm. how do we how do we launch this? And That's so cool. And we had this ambitious goal. It was scary because I didn't have any fabric. Um, we went in. We went into a six month long fabric drought, and I we gave essentially a good portion of our fabric to this project um, because it was so important. 
And it was sort of scary, like wondering, like, when are we going to get restocked? And um, we ended up like launching it. And what's so cool is when you have an idea that's actually gonna make a difference, like the right people just sort of seemingly fall out of nowhere. And mm -hmm. this um, PR firm reached out to us, um, Jam Collective, and they did like pro bono PR stuff for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was wild. Um, to this day, I've never had that many sales in a, in a single day. Um, I think we sold, we sold a thousand of them in less than four days, um, and raised over $20,000, um, which has all been donated to those organizations. And that was, it was just really exciting. It felt good to be able to do something. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting to me is that it's like, what it, what it looks like is on the outside is, oh, wow, you like pulled this thing together really quickly. But the reality is, is that you have basically built your brand around that kind of collaborative work. And the, the moment yes. it, you were, you were, you were there in the moment because you, you, because you have those moments in the works all the time, basically. Yeah, yeah we, we do. And, and I think to me, it's, it's about establishing real relationships. Yeah. You know, the day of, you know, when things are starting to go south, like reaching out to, to somebody and saying, hey, I want to do this, like that feels like an inauthentic marketing yeah. ploy, yeah. as opposed to like, I have an established relationship with this artist and I deeply care about them. And like, we're doing this together as a team. And yeah. this is not about me. This is not about sales. Um, and I think that's the most important thing is like really building actual relationships. Um, I don't know. I think, yeah. and that's what I love about working with the artists is like they become like family and friends. It feels like, and like watching the artists after they've designed a Kula, like, like just seeing what they all do. It's like mm -hmm. so exciting to me. <laughs> Perfect segue to yeah, Oprah. I know. I was thinking that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just hearing um, Alina, the little bits that I know of your story. I mean, you launched your well. First of all, you have this incredible background of through hiking um, and all the richness of experience that comes from spending so much time out in the woods. Um, but then you launched your business and hit the road, living out of your vehicle at the beginning of the pandemic or in the middle of it or something. Tell us about yeah. that. <laughs> well, so it started off my boyfriend and I, we just went to Costa Rica for vacation for a few weeks before the pandemic was even a household name at that time. People knew COVID existed, but it was just in China. There was not much talk about it coming to the US. So we were in Costa Rica as everything was intensifying. And all of a sudden, all the flights were canceled and we signed up with the embassy and we were waiting for um, a repatriation flight. But there was a lot of uncertainty in terms of how we would get back. And because Costa Rica was taking everything even more seriously than the United States, mm. there was nothing to do. Like you couldn't even go sit on a park bench. All the parks were caution taped over. Wow. So yeah, there was nothing to do. And I, I often find in my life that through boredom, is when the most creative creativity comes about. Yes. Um, so it was like late at night because my I'm a total night owl. My boyfriend goes to bed early. So in Costa Rica, I was painting by headlamp at night there, making these little hiker designs just for fun. And I figured I hadn't seen anything like that out there. I was mostly making more like new jungle art. And I had actually had a trail angel from the Pacific Crest Trail ask about purchasing it. And I was like, well, I have no idea when I'm coming back to the United States, but let me look into prints. And through that process, I was like, huh, I wonder what kind of trail art's out there, which I didn't find too much. So I said, you know what, I'm going to make it. And I did eventually get back to the United States and was getting more and more passionate about pursuing this. And because I had no job to return to or really much to return to in terms of like a life plan, there was nothing to lose. And I decided I was just going to fully commit. And I was posting on Reddit at the time when someone mentioned Kula Cloth, which I was already familiar with from the PCT. I bought one of their products and someone was like, oh, Kula's having a design competition. You should enter. 
and I went on their Instagram and saw that the winner was already announced. But yeah, I loved Coolest Mission from the time that I found out about them on the PCT and it just felt right. So I sent an email, even though the competition had ended. And at that point, I didn't even have an art website or anything like I had sold a couple prints and it is crazy. Just the ripple effect of that, like the confidence it gave me reaching out and just like how on board Anastasia and her sister were um, to represent my art when, yeah, I'd been an artist for a while, but not like outdoor focused. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it's just evolved into commissions and stickers and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I, I never would have really committed to being a full-time artist if it wasn't for COVID, I don't think. That's so interesting. There's like, it's almost like the, the pandemic has like forced all of us to get like down to the essentials of like what really matters and then you kind of just follow it sometimes it feels a little like survival but then other times it's like no actually sometimes our like our souls are in survival mode too um as artists and creatives too um so um Alina, you mentioned just a little bit, like part of your um, goal is to help, you know, diversify the outdoors. And um, there's a, been a lot of conversation um, within the outdoor industry about um, wanting to, you know, improve access and just be more like, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of conversation everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm curious um, if you have found that to be easier or harder since it's, yeah. you know, I just like, yeah, can you <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, I feel like I'll have a lot more answers to that once we're not in a pandemic and I'm actually on trail and see, okay, is this just talk or like what real life changes is this having? So like my background out of college, my first job was as a diversity and inclusion fellow for Knowles. So which is the National Outdoor Leadership School. And at that time, like it was not like a buzzword or trend, like it just was something I was passionate about. So it's been really interesting seeing this year, mm -hmm. something I've been passionate about for a while now be part of social media. Mm -hmm. It's just so hard to know if in the social media world, if it is an echo chamber in some ways and maybe the people I follow I'm just hearing a lot of the same thing and I hope that there is this progression, but I don't think it will be so clear until I'm out there on the trail, but it's definitely giving me a lot of hope. And, you know, for me as a woman who got into hiking and through hiking very young, like just with gender, I've seen that gap close. Like when I went on the Appalachian Trail in 2015 versus 2017, it was an astronomically huge difference in terms of how many women to men there were. So my hope is that I'm going to see that gap also change in terms of diversity and inclusion, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and Anastasia, I, I think it'd be interesting to hear you talk too, you know, as you've worked with different artists um, and organizations, nonprofits um, that are specifically, you know, um, women of color, um, what have you learned in those kind of partnerships that you um would like to share well you know i actually i have a a um a piece of show and tell that i wanted to show alina um because we i actually got a letter from Knowles today oh, <laughs> um, so full circle yes it is um and the, the fact that it showed up today i was like i have to share this <laughs> on the call um so one of the things that we did with Alina's Kula is that we also donated um, funds from her Kula to the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts at Knowles. And so um, anyway, this was just a letter from them like saying that they actually did receive the money. <laughs> and thank you. And then it, it says at the bottom, restricted to Knowles diversity, equity, inclusion efforts from the Alina Abstract Heights Kula cloth collaboration. Aww. Pretty cool. That's, That's so, so cool. You know, I think I guess this is my my belief and my my vision of what I see is that I'm a very like forward focused thinker and 
I really believe that like a lot of the chaos and the turmoil that we've all sort of had this experience of in the last few months and, and for some cultures um, and marginalized groups of people, it's not like limited to the last few months. It's limited to like, it's generational. Um, when we know what we don't want, we know much, much, much more clearly what we do want. And I do believe that mm -hmm. um, these organizations that have are doing this nonprofit work, they're all very much focused on what we want. Like they're focused on the outdoors being a space for all. They're focused on um, sort of creating an inclusive environment for all people to be out on the trails. And, and that is a way that I, as like a white woman business owner can contribute to something that matters. It's, you know, it's like choosing artists and using what I'm doing and the privilege that I have to, to help direct funds to these organizations that are out there like doing the work and, and also doing it without necessarily sort of having this like hero mentality. I really um, try not to come off that way. Um, you know, I, I don't, it's, I think the thing that I have like, and I don't want to say struggled, but like there's a lot of stuff that we do with Kula where, you know, I don't get online and post hurrah to me. I just made this donation. You know what I mean? Like, I want it to be genuine and from the heart and I want to give for the sake of giving and because I really actually care about the people that these programs impact. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for me, a lot of it has just been reflection on like, where is this, where can this money go right now? The money that I bring in, who can I support? Um, you know, you mentioned earlier, Aubrey, that, you know, it was just so funny and ironic that like a pea cloth raised $20,000. And I, I think I wrote this thing uh, back in June, just sort of saying that this moment in time gives all of us the opportunity to be open to all the possibilities. Like a lot of, it would be really easy for me to say something like, I don't have enough money to, to hire models or like, I don't have enough money to pay uh, people of color to, to work for Kula, like, cause I can't hire anybody right now. And that would be sort of the easy way out. But what's really been fun for me is like finding creative ways to really put an effort into hiring artists, um, hiring instructors um, that are people of color or, um, you know, where I'm actually able to contribute to those communities in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. And I think all we can do is like try our best mm -hmm. and be intentional about it. And I don't think it's something that will just ever end like, oh, I, you know, I, I checked these boxes and now I'm done. I think it's something that just has to be on your mind all the time in every decision you make. And I really do try to have that as this like um, energy in the background that's always sort of helping me guide those decisions. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I totally agree that there's, um, going back to what you said about like, you know, you don't, you're not doing it to show it off or whatever. Um, my, I had a conversation with my business coach a couple months ago, um, and we were talking about that, that exact same thing. Um, he happens to be Jewish and he's like in, um, you know, my heritage, whatever we talk about, like the different, uh, like, um, Oh, what's the Mitzvah? word? Like, levels Mitzvah? of giving or something? Can you help me out, Alina? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying like a mitzvah is like a good deed. Okay. Um, yeah, so like if you do a good deed and like talk about it, that's like 
little different than if you do a good deed and don't say anything about it, which is even different than if you do a good deed and you don't even like the person receiving it doesn't even know it was you and doesn't even know what the gift was or whatever. And I think as a, as a business, um, sometimes I, 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 I feel like I'm constantly sort of weighing, um, you know, I, I, when, when we do things because we believe they're good things to do, whether it's a, a great business decision or not, sometimes I want to be able to share that in order to, to show like, Hey, look, this is possible. Like, this is what we're doing. Um, and to invite yes. people into that as well. Um, but yep. that's not always appropriate. And, um, you know, when you have this, uh, mentality of like really community. That's what it comes down to. Like we are a community, whether it's a community of people, whether it's a community of um, like all living things, whether it's a community of like the ecosystems, it's like, we are so used to thinking that everything is in its own little box and that it fits only there. Um, but really to approach everything, whether it's business or um, life or um, relationships, like to, to see those things as, as all part of a community. Um, I think that kind of feeds into this idea as well. So. I agree. Yeah. And I think it is about a balance because you're right. Like it's important to, to celebrate giving and to encourage others to do the same. Um, like I wouldn't, I don't want to not say something, um, but I, I definitely think it does have to be that balance where it's not like, rah, 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 look at me, go buy a Kula. Um, that would feel inauthentic. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a hard balance to strike. I have this problem where I just constantly want to paint people for free, but finding that balance with my time is really hard. Yeah, yeah. And when that comes back to like treating your own self too with that dignity and respect of like, I am also worth this incredible gift and yeah um oh so much good there okay I want to keep talking about this forever but I'm going to keep our conversation moving forward because I want people to know how um you know as we're approaching the holidays how people can find you support you get 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 in on your goodies <laughs> um that sounded really suggestive <laughs> Uh, when coming from the bathtub, everything else was just yeah. <laughs> changed it. Um, so um, maybe Alina, you can share first. Um, what? How can people find cool stuff um, at your website for the holidays and even beyond? Um, and then we'll yeah. do. This. So my website is through designs.com. So you can find all the information about commissions as well as prints there. Um, I also sell stickers and merchandise on Redbubble. If you just write in Alina and then my last name, well, the first part of it, D-R-U-F. There's a whole link in my Instagram, so that's probably the easiest place, um, at abstract.hikes. I'm taking on, like, probably no more than one or two more commissions in time for the holidays, but if you don't have as short of a window, I'm definitely always taking on more commissions. Cool. And Anastasia. I love that you're having to limit them. That I makes know. me so happy. <laughs> I, 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 it's so I, I, crazy to think seven months ago, I was just like in Costa Rica emailing Kulikov and now it's like, I'm just trying to keep up with it and haven't really had a day where I wanted to paint and didn't have something on my docket. So I really appreciate you and Kula and how you helped make all this happen. Okay. <laughs> so you can find Kula cloth um it's spelled k-u-l-a and then the word cloth.com pretty easy and our instagram is exactly the same if you hate the idea of a cool cloth but just want to laugh just come to the instagram you won't be disappointed <laughs> definitely i can vouch for that as well always entertaining um okay so we've come to the awesome point in this chat where we're going to do our giveaway or announce our giveaway winner um, because we just get stressed out by doing drawings live on a screen, we drew the winner ahead of time. And I'm going to bring Amanda back on to share with us who the winner is. Ask to start video. I need a drum roll. <laughs> drum roll, please. Okay, the winner is Ariella. Ariella, congratulations. Yeah. She is receiving a Red Boat Set Shower Bar of her choice, um, as well as 
I don't even remember. Something really cool from Alina's website. A print of her choosing from my website. Yes. And Anastasia, a limited edition custom Kula cloth. Yes. Yep. They will get to design um, my newest uh, contribution is you can now design your own Kula. That was like a dream of mine a few years ago. And the fact that I can like now do it is so exciting. That is so, awesome. Uh, yeah. Cool. And we have something else really exciting to announce tonight. We kind of put our brains together and we decided to offer another way to get some cool free stuff. So correct me if I get this wrong, ladies. Um, anyone who buys anything from our websites through the weekend, through Sunday at midnight, we'll say, um, we're going to do a drawing and each one of us will draw a, a name. So if I pick your name, you'll get, wait, this is where I get confused. Yeah. If I pick your name, you'll get a free red bud suds of your choosing. If Anastasia picks your name, you get a free custom cool. No, you get a free red bud suds Kula cloth, which is awesome. If you go to her Instagram, you can see the design. It is literally the only one that exists in the universe. So <laughs> it's really cool. And if Elena picks your name, you get stickers, big stickers, a big giant stickers, which is going to be awesome. So um, you don't have to do anything to enter other than buy something on our websites and then you'll automatically be. And is it, is it sort of a, a round robin? So like if I pick a name, people get, because I know I, I have this Alina Kula and that was somehow in there getting given away. <laughs> I forget how. I can't remember either. We're going to have to like, oh, it's, this is what it was. So whoever wins gets the cool stuff from the other people too. So yes. if I pick your name, you're going to get something from Red Bud Suds, something from Kula and something from Alina. Yes. Right. So if Alina picks your name, you're going to get a custom Alina Kula cloth and a Red Bud Suds. Yes. And uh, then if I pick their name, which I will pick from any, everybody on Kula's, um, orders, they will get a Red Bud Suds Kula, a Red Bud Suds bar, and an Alina sticker. Yes. We got so there'll it. be three additional winners. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <Robert. laughs> this is the world's most why... complicated giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just my brain. It doesn't handle these details very well. Um, okay, cool. Well, we have a little bit of time um, for anyone who has any questions. So if you want to ask any of these amazing women about their businesses, about their art, about their process, pop it into the, um, the chat on either Zoom or on Facebook, um, on our little Facebook Live that is working, because um, I am seeing it's working. Um, and in the meantime, um, we'll just wait for a fat little second and see. If questions about that. I'm waiting. Do, do, do. I was going to ask if anyone had questions before we did the, our cool announcements, but no one would be able to think anyway because our announcement was so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> There's a question from Stacy on there. We love your stories and support of all the amazing organizations. Thanks for sharing. Do you have, do you all have one guilty pleasure? when hiking to recommend? Ooh. Alina, do you want to go? Yeah. I'm, try ah, I'm trying to think something that's a guilty pleasure. You go first. Well, if I'm, if I'm backpacking, it's Crocs. Nice. <laughs> um, like, cause those are totally unnecessary, but a lot of times I bring them along and I will not do a backpacking trip without any sort of, some sort of chocolate being present. So. Mm -hmm. I would say my like luxury item is this little inflator for my sleeping pad, which is most people in the hiking community would probably say is unnecessary and it's really loud, but I just hate inflating my sleeping pad at the end of a long day. Nice. Um, so I have, I'm just going to answer the question too, because I want to, 
Um, I've been holding my tongue this whole time. Um, we've been doing a lot of like super like car camping because of toddler now, a little bit of backpacking, but um, like overnight stuff. But my luxury item right now is like an actual giant pillow. Like I was never the kind of person that would bring a camp pillow camping, even if we were car camping, but I freaking love having a pillow now. Um, mm -hmm. And then if I'm truly backpacking, this is gonna sound like a promo, but it's not. I actually really love taking a full bar of red one tubs along and taking a little in the shower because it's so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so good. So, um, okay, there's another question that popped up. Um, Alina, favorite, this is from JB Metcalf, um, favorite and worst moment on the AT or PCT through hike? Mm, okay. I guess my favorite moment, I guess probably the end of my through hike, it definitely meant a lot to me on the AT since I failed at my first attempt in 2015 and got injured. And that was a really, really serious life dream since I was 13 years old. So going back and starting from square one in 2017 and then finally making it and my parents went out to Maine and met me and coming down that mountain. And, I was wearing a Wonder Woman costume and being super corny, but that was probably one of my favorite moments. And then my least favorite moment, I mean, this is the whole tangent, but there was like a donation hostel in Washington where I thought I might be murdered in my sleep by the caretaker <laughs> who <laughs> accused, yeah, um, that was a really terrifying experience. Someone very emotionally unhinged who, started accusing my boyfriend and I of all sorts of things in the laundry room and we were just trying to like get our laundry through and not have it end up in the loaner clothes and he had machetes and it's a whole story but Damn. that was not a great moment thanks for sharing yeah that sounds terrifying um so there's another question from Liz um is there an increased risk this would be for uh, Anastasia an increased risk of bladder infection using the Kula glass so in the over 50 plus thousand or more Kulas that have gone out into the world, I have never received a report of one. Um, in fact, I've actually had people write with opposite testimonials. Um, I've heard stories of people who literally try to dehydrate themselves on the trail and not pee because they like didn't really know how to handle their hygiene. And as a result of not peeing, they were having bladder issues and UTIs. Um, I have been contacted by numerous people that said that they had had re recurring UTIs on trail it was something that they always struggled with. And when they started using the Kula, um, I think because they were like peeing more frequently and not like trying to hold it, um, maybe they just experienced less. And then also, if you think about it, um, when you're using a pee cloth, you're just using it to pat dry and then you're, you know, taking it away from your body as opposed to drip drying where you try to shake it off as much as possible and now you have any residual moisture that's left over is now in your underwear and so your underwear is essentially becoming a a pea cloth but now you're like marinating in it all day long <laughs> not to get not to get tmi um that being said, I always encourage people to like do what works best for them. If you're hesitant about using a Kula um, or I would just recommend like buying a piece of fabric and like testing out, like buy a piece of microfiber and just test out using a pea cloth first to see if you like it. Um, and then if you decide to buy a Kula at some point, great. But um, the fabric itself is antimicrobial. And uh, to my knowledge, I've never heard of anybody having issues. I also yeah. think just like simply being put just that it snaps into place. Like a lot of women, you know, before Kula was a thing on the trail, were just using like loose bandanas on their pack. So if they set their pack down or it falls into the dirt, then you have dirt and all sorts of bacteria just on this bandana but at least in my experience with the cooler having it closed off just felt like way more hygienic 
Yeah, and and you know what side you've used as well. Like with a bandana, it's like who knows what side I've used and who knows what side I've like laid down on the trail and maybe there's like horse poop on the trail, you know, who knows. Um so I do think it is a little bit cleaner of an option and I think most people will say that they notice an improvement in their hygiene. Cool. Yay. Um, so there's another question from Sarah Joyner. Um, do you solo hike? And if so, what type of safety tips do you have? And this will probably be our last question just to. I can go first. Um, yes, I do solo hike, not as much recently, but both my through hikes, I started off solo on the Appalachian trail. And I would say my like two biggest tips are one, if I'm camping alone, I try to make my like camp set up as if you would not know that I was a solo female alone. So I'm not going to like have a sports bra dangling on a branch or my shoes that are like obviously female shoes right outside my tent. I have like all my gear tucked in. I could be anyone. Mm -hmm. And then second, like I don't hitchhike. Um, I don't hitchhike solo. So like any through hike, you're going to have to hitchhike for supplies. So I'll either wait for another hiker at a road crossing or a strategy I adopted on the Appalachian Trail was that I would wait in a parking lot and kind of loiter there until there was someone that I just felt comfortable around or a woman. And instead of like directly soliciting the ride, I would just be like, hey, do you know where the post office is in town or where the grocery store is? And then that gives them the option that if they want to give me a ride, they can offer, but I'm not like directly soliciting it either. Cool. Yeah. I love That's that. Yeah. Um, I do, I do hike alone, not as much um, because my husband, Aaron, usually goes with me, but I live in a pretty wooded area. And so I actually sort of hike alone almost every day. Uh, where I live, there are known cougars prowling around. So I do usually carry some bear spray with me. Obviously that's not a guarantee. So I just try to make noise. The one thing I'll say too, is that, um, you know, we, we've heard, I think we all hear stories like sort of scary stories about people hiking alone. And if there was, if every newspaper in the country today published an article about every single hiker that went out on a solo hike today and returned home safely, it'd probably be a lot of news articles. And I'm not saying like, oh, just disobey, like throw caution to the wind, but I really feel like it can be done really safely. Um, bringing things like a Garmin inReach if you're going out of cell service is a great tip as well. And letting people know where you're going and when you're due back. That's a little bit harder on a through hike because you're just like constantly moving. But if you're going out on a day hike, uh, it, does, it takes two seconds to text a friend and just say, this is where I'm going and I'll be back. Um, at this time, at least somebody knows. Yeah, I mean, I sent my Garmin coordinates to my mom every single night on every hike I did, even when I was hiking with my partner. Um, just because, yeah, I mean, if multiple days went by and she didn't get that message, then she'd be obviously concerned. Yeah, yeah, those are awesome tips. Um, I wouldn't add anything to them. Uh, the basically letting someone know, you know, when to expect or where to expect you is a really, really good one. Um, yeah. I'll include all of these like resources and whatnot in the recap when I um, post the, the camper chat archive. Um, so anyone, you know, who wants to kind of come back and have some, some suggestions, um, it'll be easy to find those tips too. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to wrap it up for the evening. Uh, Anastasia, Alina, thank you so very, very, very much for taking some of your precious time to sit with me in the tub. <laughs> this is where I'd be anyway, so. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Anastasia, I hope you can get a nice relaxing <laughs> bath this evening. Um, make sure you well. follow Alina at um, abstract.hikes. Hikes, can't talk, yes, on Instagram. Correct. Um, check out her website through designs.com and Anastasia at the Kula Cloth. Um, and just a couple quick little reminders. Um, Redbud Suds is doing a Christmas or holiday 
um, season concert on Saturday, Facebook Live as well. So if you don't have anything to do on Saturday evening at 7.30, come join us. Um, we'll be, I'll be playing the banjo. Um, I'm joining my sister-in-laws um, for some songs. We've been kind of in a COVID bubble. And over the last um, about six weeks or so, we've worked up some songs that we think will be fun to share. So, um, and then, yeah, that's, that's really it. So thanks everybody. Um, Alina and Anastasia, do you have any final words to share? Otherwise we'll sign up. No, I just appreciate the chance to talk with everybody and just had a really nice time. So thanks for having us. Yay. I'll say ditto and thank you for joining me in the tub. When I first came up with this whole interview in the tub idea, I was like, is this strange? I was kind of self-conscious about it. So having you fully embrace it means the world. Mm. I love it. And if, if, I, if I had like more than negative bars I would be in my tub right now but of course yes. I'm literally like very precariously positioned yes yes <laughs> well yeah. I hope this starts a revolution and in the future all meetings are conducted in the tub I agree I totally agree it'll be like a rude awakening when we actually have to go in public to be in public <laughs> to do presentations that's why I decided to be an artist now I don't have to leave the house yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a total hermit, so I got it. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm the black sheep amongst you all. I, I would die if I couldn't get out and, and be immersed in a lot of people. So, <laughs> alas. Anyway, th thanks again, you all, so much. And um, yeah, wish you a happy holidays. You too. Bye. Bye.